What's going on everybody? So today in this video, I'm gonna show you a really, really simple approval system. Later on in a different video, I may do an advanced approval system, but in this one, I'm just gonna do a really simple, you get a request, you need to send an email to an approval, or you need to send a Slack message to an approver and an easy way where they can go do that. So that's what this video is gonna be about is just a really simple way to do that. If you haven't met me before, my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS and we build solutions just like this for clients all day, every day. If you need help building a system like this, go down to the link in the description, optimizeis.com, and you can speak with us today. We're going to jump into it now in this Airtable interface. We've already started with a few different tables, more for an advanced approval system, but we're just going to show a really simple one here. So the idea that we have is we have requests that come in. So we ideally need a way to intake requests. If I go to the forms feature here, submit a new request. We have a user field, dollar amount requested. Maybe this is like, instead of user, this is like, um, actually user who requested. And then maybe we have some more details in here. That's like the notes for requests. So if we enable rich text formatting, this is gonna be our form where we can intake different requests. So when these form submissions get filled out, for an example, Ben Green, I'm gonna request, let's see, $5,000 today. And you can change that submission date to be like a created date so that the user doesn't have to fill it out. As the admin of the system, I'm going to actually go in and look at what this request looks like. So if I go from forms back to the interface and then to requests, here I'll see here's this request from Ben Green. Just to make this look right, I'm going to say REQ. This could automatically fill in if you want. So if I wanted to say every time a request comes in, it should go to one person for approval then what I would do is just create a really simple page over here in the Airtable interface. So I'd click edit. They have a really nice page called a record review page. So if I go over here, add a page to this request right here, record review requests. Yep. It's going to be from requests. It's not going to be filtered at all. This is also kind of approving you assuming you just have one approval approver maybe if we get to the end i'll show if different people would approve each different request but for now it's just super simple so here's all the requests finish that up i'm just going to call this simple because there's some more advanced use cases in this one so these are requests simple what we're kind of missing here is we need a status of some sort. So we need to be able to approve it. So if we have a status, we have pending is going to be a new status. Approved is going to be another new status. And then rejected is going to be another status. For the person logged into the interface, I think they should be able to edit that field. Over here on the left, I'd like to ideally group these by that status. So like this first one, let's say that that one was approved. That's gonna be updated. This one's pending. Number eight, the one we just submitted was pending. Let's update a few more of these. We got rejected on that one, rejected on that one. Rejected on that one. Okay, just about cleaned up all these. Approved on that one. Okay, so now we have this one that just came in right here, 008, has notes, has the submission date, dollar amount. This is who requested it. Some simple, just like really good user experience things you can add to this is you can add some buttons. So you could add a button and say, approve and change it from go to external URL to update record. 
this allows you to say what fields you want to be updated. So I want to update that status to be approved. And before, after. So if I click this button, it's going to update the status and say approved. It can also require confirmation. Let's, let's reset the status. So if I click approve here, it's going to say, are you sure? You're going to make an update. Yep, I'm sure. Now update it. So that's how that can work. From the form, if you wanted to, a few different ways to get the status to default as pending. One way that I've seen people do it, I'm not in love with this because it kind of muddies up the form, but you can add a default value here of pending, but then you're like, well, Ben, they could select approved automatically. Well, you'd say only let them select the pending option, make it required so they have to put it as pending. The other way is if we clicked on this field in the form and we said edit field, we can make the default option pending just like that. Let's go back to the interface. So here's all my requests. I think of notifications for this kind of thing two separate ways. There's two separate automations I would typically offer a client for this kind of request and approval system. One is a, like every single time a request is made, send an email to the person who needs to approve. The other way that I have seen it done is if it's not quite as urgent or we just think there's going to be way too many emails, we may say every day or every Monday, send an email to this person and here's the five things you need to go approve. That way it allows them to batch the task. So we're going to add a simple note of So a simple notification, this one's going to be per request. So we're going to say when a record matches conditions on the request table where the status is pending, I then want to send an email. And this is assuming that I'm the only one, I'm the, I'm the approver and I'm the one with access to the interface. So it's just going to go straight to my email. It's going to say new request for approval rejection. And then the email, we're just gonna say, please go here to update the request. This is one of my favorite automation features right here is to do a hyperlink. So you need the straight brackets and then parentheses with no space in between right here. Inside the parentheses, you can include a link. And if you click the little blue plus over here while you're inside those parentheses, you get the option of pulling anything from the triggering record in this automation. So I'm going to pull the page record URL and choose to send them to the request simple interface. So what this looks like is I'm going to use step eight. I would get an email that looks like this. I click here. That takes me to this tab request eight. I click approve done. This same thing is how you could probably set something up if you wanted to say, if it is marked as approved, send an email. And to make the email dynamic to the person who submitted it, you would want to capture their email somehow on the request. But you could pull in, like, let's say, for example, instead of user who requested, I had, I had collected the email of the user who requested. I could pull that in right here instead of my email. So that is one way to do notifications. The other way that we typically see is this is going to be an advanced notification and let's say weekly. So instead of when a record matches conditions, this is going to be at a scheduled time. And we're going to say every day. Actually, we're going to say every week. So every one week on Mondays at 10 a.m., go find all of the records in the request table where the condition is the status 
is none of approved or rejected. So there's a pending decision. That means basically the status is either pending or somebody erased the status, which still means there should be a decision. And now instead of going here, what I would do is I would go to this interface, click done. And in the URL, you can't really see it, but I'm gonna copy, let's see, how can I? If you go in the URL right here and you click, like double click where it says PAG, it's gonna highlight that. And then I hold command, hold shift and go to the left and like that highlights the whole thing to the left. I'm gonna copy that. And I think if I just go to that page, yeah, it takes me to the first one. So using that link, again, if you didn't follow along in the URL while you're on this type of page, I would double click on the part that starts with PAG and then hold command, hold sh shift and hit the left key and then command C to copy it. It's my shortcut. Now back in the automation on the advanced notification, I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna paste in my URL right there. So just so this is grammatically correct, I'm gonna say, so I wanna pull in, I wanna say like there's five requests for approval slash rejection or two requests. And so if I click on the blue plus, go to find records, here you can include the length so that looks good. Some people, even if they're zero, they want an email going to them for this. Some people don't want that email. If you don't want that email, what you would do is you would say, send a conditional to where, or add a conditional where that length is greater than zero, and then drag this email in this part. So now this is only gonna send an email to the this person if there is at least one request that needs approval or rejection. So this is a really simple way to do approvals. If you have a more complex approval system or maybe you have multiple people, maybe there's multiple people that change based on the dollar amount requested, as you may see in this, go check out the link in the end screen. I'm actually gonna show how to build a more complex approval system that you may be able to see here with conditional visibility based on who the approver is. It's going to show you how to build approval templates. It's going to show you a lot more advanced features in Airtable. Like that'll blow your mind. Go check out the link in the end screen right there. In that video, I'm also going to give a link to be able to copy this base. So go check it out and have a great day, but go click on that video in the end screen to go see the, see the video. It's a longer tutorial for advanced notifications and advanced approvals in Airtable.